Tinctures are basically liquid flavors you can easily make at home, and they open up a whole world of possibilities when it comes to cocktails. So today I'm going to show you how to make some and my favorite ways to use them. Also, if you watched last week's video till the end, I revealed what was my secret ingredient for homemade yellow chartreuse. And I know a lot of people are waiting for this recipe, and I understand, especially now that chartreuse is harder to get than it ever was. So I feel you, today we're finally starting to dab all the topics so make sure to stay till the end if that's something interesting for you so now my friends if you guys are ready you know the drill let's go So first, before we start messing around with the recipes, I think it would be important to address what are tinctures and how they are made. Basically, tinctures are liquefied flavor or aromatic compounds, and the way they are made is simply by dissolving that flavor or aromatic ingredient into a solvent. And for us home bartenders, the most efficient solvent we can get is alcohol. The process couldn't be easier. All you have to do is to mix these two ingredients together and let that steep at room temperature for about two weeks before stringing it out and that's how you extract the flavors and create a tincture. Now if you're wondering what's the difference between that, an extract and an essence because it can get a little confusing sometimes, I would say none of them are the same. They're not made the same way. They don't have the same level of intensity and because of that they all have different usage. I would say that tincture Tinctures and extract are the closest one because they're both made by maceration, while the essences are made by distillation and essential oils. So they all are pretty different while they have the same kind of usage, which is flavoring agents. And for me, tinctures are the most ready to use of them three. I feel like extracts and essences need further modifications before you can start using them. So I really love tinctures. So now that we've covered pretty much the basics, we can start making some and I'm going to give you more details along the way. So let's start with one of my favorite tips of them all when it comes to tinctures. I love to use them to reduce waste behind the bar or at home. Let me explain. When you make cocktails, you need a whole bunch of different syrups. For me, there's five classics. Simple, Gum Honey, Orgia, and Grenadine. I've already covered them on the channel before, so I'm gonna link the video up here. But beside that, you will want to experiment with all sorts of different flavored syrups. Cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, smoky, spicy, all sorts of different ones. But the problem with them is they're not shelf stable. On the other hand, tinctures are. So if you use a combo of your tincture with one of the five syrups, you can get rid of pretty much all the other ones. So I think this is great. We're gonna start today with a flavor you're gonna see a lot in cocktail books cinnamon. The key here, and that's going to be the same for all your flavors, is you're going to need between 5 to 10 times solvent than you have ingredients. What's going to make the difference here is the ABV of your solvent. The higher it is, the less ingredient you're going to need. So if you use a 40% vodka, I recommend you use 5 times more vodka than you have ingredient. And if you use an 80% Everclear, for example, you can go all the way up to 10 times more Everclear than you have ingredients. And the result of these two tinctures will be pretty much similar in terms of intensity and anything between that range will work as well so at that point it's just a matter of preferences. So let's say you want to do 120 ml of tincture and you have a 40% vodka. You're gonna need 120 ml of vodka and 24 grams of cinnamon. You're gonna start by crushing the cinnamon in smaller pieces, throw that in a jar, pour the vodka over it, give a brief stir, close the jar and let that steep at room temperature for about two weeks. You're gonna open it up to give it a brief stir every day or so and then after two weeks you're gonna fine strain it through a very fine mesh strainer or even a coffee filter, bottle it up and this is how you make any kind of tinctures. So as I said, this is awesome to get rid of many different syrups. It's gonna save you a ton of space in your fridge. It's gonna save you from a lot of wastage. I really love this technique. This particular cinnamon tincture, for example, is great in an old fashioned, in a zombie, or any other cocktails that request a cinnamon syrup. Using only one or two meals in one cocktail will really give you the feeling that you're using a bold and strong, delicious 
cinnamon syrup. So feel free to experiment and use this technique for many different flavors. For example, you want to make yourself a penicillin and already have a honey syrup in your fridge? Use your ginger tincture. You want to make a different kind of old-fashioned? Use a cardamom tincture. Or you want to make a spicy margarita? Use your spicy tincture. And this is point number two. Incorporating spicy flavors in a cocktail can be very tricky sometimes. Modeling a hot pepper in a shaker can yield a very different result from time to time, depending on the spiciness of the pepper, depending on the strength you apply on your modeling. So really, in terms of consistency, that's not really that. So that's when I really love to use a spicy tincture when I'm making spicy cocktails. One of my favorite is with the Thai bird chili pepper, and I like to use them fresh, so I'm gonna have beautiful fresh taste from the flesh and a lot of spiciness from the seeds. So what you're gonna do simply is gonna remove the stem, slice them in two, place that in a jar, weight it and add the proper amount of solvent. I'm using a 5 to 1 ratio of vodka to pepper here but believe me with the strength of the peppers you could easily go to 10 to 1 even if it's just a 40 percent alcohol. And then, like with the cinnamon tincture, you're gonna let that steep at room temperature for about two weeks. Don't forget to open it every once in a while to give it a little stir. And then, after two weeks, you fine strain it, bottle it, and don't forget to label this one because you don't want to confuse it with anything else. Now, quick disclaimer, I use fresh peppers here, which is totally fine. You can also use fresh fruits. It will work really nicely. But there's one fresh ingredient that usually don't work well in tinctures, and it's fresh herbs. So you can't really impart some fresh herbs flavor in cocktails or in syrups for example using the tincture technique but for anything else almost anything else it will work really well now for the third way I really love to use my tinctures for it's to control the bitterness some ingredients are extremely bitter and it's really hard to control their flavor and just a little bit too much can ruin completely what you're making. For example, if you're making amari, if you're making vermouth, if you're making bitters, a little too much of absinthe, a little too much of gentian, a little too much of dandelion can completely throw off the balance of what you're making. So I love to do tinctures with my bitter ingredients. So that way I infuse the other stuff and I add when I'm ready, little by little, my bittering agent to the exact level of bitterness that I want. This is a warm tinctures I'm making for an upcoming video about vermouth. I think this is the best way to control perfectly the amount of bitterness you want in your vermouth. So again, like the other ones, it is really simple. You weigh your bittering agent, depending on the solvent you're using, you're gonna make your ratio of between 5 and 10, close the lid, let that steep at room temperature for about two weeks, give it a little stir every day or so, and after two weeks, fine strain it, bottle it up, and then you're ready to make the perfect vermouth tomorrow or bitters. Now, for those of you still watching, thank you and good job, but I am sure you are still here because you wanna know about the beginning of the yellow chartreuse recipe. So let's get rid of the elephant in the room and let's dive right into it. We're gonna make an ombre tincture, but we're gonna make it slightly differently than how we made the other ones, just because like in anything, there's always some exceptions and ombre is part of those exceptions. So you see, ombre, also known as vegetal musk, is a seed that's really hard. So if you simply place that in a jar and pour some solvent over it, you're hardly gonna get some flavors out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grind the seeds before adding the solvent. Now for the ratio, the five to one will not cut it. It's not gonna be intense enough. So we're gonna make something that's closer to an extract. We're gonna do one part of seeds for two parts of alcohol. That way we're making sure to have enough flavors to season our chartreuse. In terms of quantity for the chartreuse to make one bottle that we're gonna make in a a couple of weeks, you're only gonna need a couple of mils of the tincture. So you don't need to make a lot, but since this is shelf stable, you can always make a bigger batch. And that way, when you wanna make another bottle, you're not gonna have to wait for two weeks for the tincture to be ready. And that's all there is to do for the first step to make some yellow chartreuse. So my friends, we're finally here. It's happening. We're soon going to make some chartreuse on the channel and I can't wait. So my friends, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Check us out on Patreon. Turn that bell if you want to make sure not to miss the next video. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon.